The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today as we finish out our week, August the 27th. August the 27th, today we will have chapters 9 through 12 in 2 Kings. So let us hear God's word together and pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jehu, anointed king of Israel, 2 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. Then Elisha, the prophet, called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Tie up your garments and take this flask of oil in your hand, and go to Ramoth, Gilead. And when you arrive, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, and go in and have him rise from among his fellows, and lead him to an inner chamber. Then take the flask of oil, and pour it on his head, and say, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, do not linger. So the young man, the servant of the prophet, went to Ramoth, Gilead, and when he came, behold, the commanders of the army were in council, and he said, I have word for you, O commander. And Jehu said, To which of us all? And he said, to you, O commander. So he arose and went into the house, and the young man poured the oil on his head, saying to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anoint you king over the people of the Lord over Israel, and you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master, so that I may avenge on Jezebel the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab every male bond or free in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. And the dog shall eat Jezebel in the territory of Jezreel, and none shall bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. When Jehu came out to the servants of his master, they said to him, Is all well? Why did this mad fellow come to you? And he said to them, You know the fellow and his talk. And they said, That is not true. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and so he spoke to me, saying, Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel. Then in haste every man of them took his garment and put it under him on the bare steps, and they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. So far the word of the Lord. Elisha sends a son of the prophets to anoint Jehu ruler over Israel to fulfill God's promise of judgment against the dynasty of Ahab. Just as this apprentice to the prophet fulfills his duty diligently, so fulfill your calling diligently in the Lord's name, no matter how many others may dismiss it or jeer at you. God will fulfill his purpose for you, and he will bless you with the strength for dedicated service. Through Jesus Christ, who bore all your scorn and served you diligently for the sake of your salvation. Let us pray. O Lord, Swing wide the door of opportunity for me, that I may run to serve you in all confidence of your word. In your name I pray. Amen. Now verses 14 through 29 entitled, Jehu assassinates Joram and Haza. Thus Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimish, conspired against Joram. Now Joram, with all Israel, had been on guard at Ramuth Gilead against Hazel, king of Syria. But King Joram had returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds that the Syrians had given him, when he fought with Hazel, king of Syria. So Jehu said, If this is your decision, then let no one slip out of the city to go and tell the news in Jezreel. Then Jehu mounted his chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there. And Ahazah, king of Judah, had come down to visit Joram. Now the watchman was standing on the tower in Jezreel, and he saw the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So a man on horseback went to meet him and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What do you have to do with peace? Turn around and ride behind me. And the watchman reported, saying, The messenger reached them, but he is not coming back. Then he sent out a second horseman, who came to them and said, Thus the king has said, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What do you have to do with peace? Turn around and ride behind me. Again the watchman reported, He reached them, but he is not coming back. 
and the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimesh, for the he drives furiously. Joram said, Make ready, and they made ready his chariot. Then Joram, king of Israel, and Ahazah, king of Judah, set out, each in his chariot, and went to meet Jehu, and met him at the property of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And when Joram saw Jehu, he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace can there be, so long as the whorings and the sorcerers of your mother Jezebel are so many? Then Joram reigned about and fled, saying to Ahazah, Treachery, O Hazah. And Jehu drew his bow with full strength and shot Joram between the shoulders so that the arrow pierced his heart, and he sank in his chariot. Jehu said to Bidkar, his aide, Take him up and throw him on the plot of ground belonging to Nebuth, the Jezreelite. For remember, when you and I rode side by side behind Ahab, his father, how the Lord made his pronouncement against him. As surely as I saw yesterday the blood of Nebuth and the blood of his sons, declares the Lord. I will repay you on this plot of ground. Now therefore take him up and throw him on the plot of ground in accordance with the word of the Lord. When Azah the king of Judah saw this, he fled in the direction of Beth Hagan. And Jehu pursued him and said, Shoot him also. And they shot him in the chariot at the ascent of Gur, which is by Iblim. And he fled to Megiddo, and he died there. His servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem and buried him in his tomb with his fathers in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, Ahazah began to reign over Judah. So far the word of the Lord. The Lord's judgment against Ahab's household is fulfilled with vicious irony when Jehu shoots Joram and his body cast in the vineyard of Naboth. The Lord will fulfill his word of condemnation and also his word of deliverance. Removing a wicked ruler from over his people, he puts to death and gives to life to us who believe. He gives life everlasting in Christ. We pray, O Lord, give me life according to your word. In your name I pray. Amen. The end of chapter 9, verses 30 through 37, entitled, Jehu Executes Jezebel. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out of the window. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, you, Zimri, murderer of your master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? Two or three eunuchs looked out at him. He said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood spattered on the wall and on the horses, and they trampled on her. Then he went in and ate and drank, and he said, See now to this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. But when they went to bury her, they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. When they came back and told him, he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Elisha the Tishbite. In the territory of Jezreel, the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. And the corpse of Jezebel shall be as dung on the face of the field in the territory of Jezreel, so that no one can say, this is Jezebel. So far the word of the Lord. Jehu executes and disdains the body of Jezebel, the wicked queen mother of Israel. Despite Jehu's unwillingness to follow the Lord's word completely, the Lord brought the prophecy to absolute completion through trampling horses and biting dogs. Not a letter of his word shall fail. Though we fail, God's will does not, does succeed for his sake, for our sakes, in Christ Jesus the Savior. We pray, O King of heaven, reign in justice and compassion for the sake of your church. In your name we pray. Amen. Beginning in chapter 10, entitled, Jehu Slaughters Ahab's Descendants. Now Ahab had 70 sons in Samarai. So Jehu wrote letters and sent them to Samaria, to the rulers of the city, to the elders, and to the guardians of the sons of Ahab, saying, Now then, as soon as this letter comes to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, fortified cities also, and weapons, select the best and fittest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid and said, Behold, the two kings could not stand before him. How then can we stand? So he who was over the palace and he who was over the city 
together with the elders and the guardians, sent to Jehu, saying, We are your servants, and we will do all that you tell us. We will not make anyone king. Do whatever is good in your eyes. Then he wrote to them a second letter, saying, If you are on my side, and if you are ready to obey me, take the heads of your master's sons, and come to me at Jezreel tomorrow at this time. Now the king's sons, seventy persons, were with the great men of the city, who were bringing them up. And as soon as the letter came to them, they took the king's sons and slaughtered them, seventy persons, and put their heads in baskets, and sent them to him at Jezreel. When the messengers came and told him they brought the heads of the king's sons, he said, Lay them in two heaps at the entrance of the gate until the morning. Then in the morning, when he went out, he stood and said to all the people, You are innocent. It was I who conspired against my master and killed him. But who struck down all these? Know then that there shall fall to the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord has done what he said by his servant Elisha. So Jehu struck down all who remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, all his great men and his close friends and his priests, until he left them none remaining. Then he set out and went to Samaria. On the way he, he was at Beth Echad of the shepherds. Jehu met the relatives of Ahazah, king of Judah, and he said, Who are you? And they answered, We are the relatives of Ahazah, and we came down to visit the royal princes and the sons of the queen mother. He said, Take them alive. And they took them alive and slaughtered them at the pit of Beth Echad, forty-two persons, and he spared none of them. And when he departed from there, he met Jehan Adad, Adab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he greeted him and said to him, Is your heart true to my heart as mine is to yours? And Jehan Adab answered, It is. Jehu said, If it is, give me your hand. So he gave him his hand, and Jehu took him up with him into the chariot, and he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So he had him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he struck down all who remained to Ahab in Samaria, till he had wiped them out according to the word of the Lord that he spoke to Elisha. In these verses, Jehu pretends to be zealous for the Lord's way while disobeying the Lord's word. Today the Lord calls you to follow his word deliberately yet not as an excuse for cruel judgment against others. Even the condemnation of God's law ultimately serves the peaceful, life-giving purposes of his gospel by which he forgives our sins and restores us. We pray, grant me a faithful heart, O Lord, to follow your word and see in it your compassionate purpose as always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Chapter 10, verses 18 through 27, entitled, Jehu Strikes Down the Prophets of Baal. Then Jehu assembled all the people and said to them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu will serve him much. Now therefore call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his worshippers and all his priests. Let none be missing, for I have had a great sacrifice to offer to Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu did it with cunning in order to destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu ordered, Sanctify a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it, and Jehu sent throughout all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left who did not come. And as they entered the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was filled from one end to the other, he said to them, Who is in charge of the wardrobe? Bring out the vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. So he brought out the vestments for them. Then Jehu went into the house of Baal with Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, and he said to the worshippers of Baal, Search, and see that there is no servant of the Lord here among you, but only the worshippers of Baal. Then they went in two to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had stationed eighty men outside and said, The man who allows any of those whom I give into your hands to escape shall forfeit his life. So as soon as he had made an end of the offering, the burnt offering, Jehu said to the guard and to the officers, Go in and strike them down. Let not a man escape. So when they put them to the sword, the guard and the officers cast them out and went into the inner room of the house of Baal. And they brought out the pillar that was in the house of Baal and burned it. And they demolished the pillar of Baal and demolished the house of Baal and made it a latrine to this day. So far the word. Despite Jehu's excuses, the Lord grants him a long reign 
a four-generation dynasty. The Lord tolerates unjust rulers when it serves his purposes of judgment and it is good f and it is for the good of his people. Pray for your leaders that they may be not only successful but also just and righteous. Your just and righteous leader, the King of Heaven, will hear your pleas and answer according to his good purpose and according to the mercies of Jesus. We pray. Preserve your church, O Lord, deliver and grant all nations, faithful, peaceful leaders. In your name we pray. Amen. Continuing in chapter 10, verse 28, entitled, Jehu Reigns in Israel. Thus Jehu wiped out Baal from Israel, but Jehu did not turn aside from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which he had made Israel to sin, that is, the golden calves that were in Bethel and in Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in carrying out what is right in my eyes, and have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, your sons of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu was not careful to walk in the law of the Lord, the God of Israel, with all his heart. He did not turn from the sins of Jeroboam, which he made Israel to sin. In those days the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel. Hazel defeated them throughout the territory of Israel, from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites, and the Reubenites, and the Manassites, from Ere, which is by the valley of the Arnon, that is Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and all his might, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Jehoz as his son reigned in his place. The time that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was twenty-eight years. So far the word of the Lord. In the devotion for verses 18 through 27 speak these words. Through deception, Jehu wipes out more potential rivals, the servants of Baal who were closely allied with Ahab's dynasty. Again, Jehu demonstrates his wit and taste for irony. How regrettable that this clever man did not put his talents to work for the sake of proclaiming God's word. Rather than using your talents for personal gain, turn your God-given talents over to the Lord's service and the service of others. Christ, whose wit confounded his detractors, also spoke plainly the life-changing message of God's grace. We pray, O dearest Jesus, teach me to love my enemies and to declare to them your promises rather than attack them with lies and weapons. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now into chapter 11, the first <clears throat> three verses entitled, Attilaha reigns in Judah. Now when Attilaha, the mother of Ahazah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal family but Jehoshabah. Sheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from the, among the king's sons who were being put to death. And she put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Thus they hid him from Attilah, so that he was not put to death. And he remained with her six years, hidden in the house of the Lord, while Attilah reigned over the land. So for the word. The bloody dynastic practices of pagan nations and of the northern kingdom of Israel erupt in Judah through Attilah. Amid this vicious purge, the Lord preserves the house of David and the renewal of faithful worship by protecting Joash through his aunt, Jehoshaphat. As an aunt or uncle, commend your nieces and nephews to the Lord's care by looking out for their welfare, by praying for them, turning them over to the security of the Lord's house. As the Lord preserved the house of David from which Jesus would be born, so he will, through the word, preserve and nurture the treasured members of your family. We pray, O Lord, grant unity and peace in our families on the basis of your holy word and a common confession of our Lord and Savior Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Beginning in verse 4, Joash anointed king in Judah. But in the seventh year, Jehoiada sent and brought the captains of the Karites and of the guards and had them come to him in the house of the Lord. And he made a covenant with them and put them under oath in the house of the Lord. And he showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, This is the thing that you shall do. 
one third of you, those who come off duty on the Sabbath and guard the king's house, another third being at the gate, sir, and the third at the gate behind the guards shall guard the palace. And the two divisions of you which come on duty in force on the Sabbath and guard the house of the Lord on behalf of the king shall surround the king, each with his weapons in his hand. And whoever approaches the ranks is to be put to death. Be with the king when he goes out and when he comes in. The captains did according to all that Jehoiadab the priest commanded. And they each brought his men who were to go off duty on the Sabbath with those who were to come on duty on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiadab the priest. And the priest gave to the captains the spears and the shields that had been King's David's, which were in the house of the Lord. And the guards stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, from the south side of the house to the north side of the house, around the altar and on the house on behalf of the king. Then he brought out the king's son and put the crown on him and gave him the testimony. And they proclaimed him king and anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, Long live the king. When Atelaha heard the noise of the guard and of the people. She went into the house of the Lord to the people, and when she looked, there was the king standing by the pillar according to the custom, and the captains and the trumpeters beside the king, and all the people of the land rejoicing and blowing trumpets. And Atelaha tore her clothes and cried, Treason, treason. Then Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains, who were set over the army, bring her out between the ranks, and put to death with a sword anyone who follows her. For the priest said, Let her not be put to death in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her, and she went through the horse's entrance to the king's house, and there she was put to death. And Jehoadad made a covenant between the Lord and the king and people, that they should be the Lord's people, and also between the king and the people. Then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and tore it down, his altars and his images. They broke in pieces, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, before the altars. And the priest posted watchmen over the house of the Lord, and he took the captains, the Karites, the guards, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, marching through the gate of the guards to the king's house. And he took his seat on the throne of the kings. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet after Attila had been put to death with the sword at the king's house. Jehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. <clears throat> Through a covenant promise, the Lord emboldens Jehoad, the Karites, and the guards to place David's heir, Joash, on his rightful throne. As the Lord gives you strength, work with his servants to secure the good of his people. God's word and promise are the basis of our unity and strength in Christ, always. Let us pray. Grant your people, O Lord, unity and faith and purpose to withstand all evil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the last verse of chapter 11 and the first three verses of chapter 12 in 2 Kings entitled Joash Reigns in Judah. Jehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. In the seventh year of Jeho, Jehoash began to reign. And he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibiah of Beersheba. And Jehoash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all his days because Jehoiada the priest instructed him. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and make offerings on the high places. So far the word. Through faithful instruction, the Lord's priest, Jehoiada, leads Joash to have a long and blessed reign. As the Lord grants you opportunity faithful to give faithful instruction to the children in your charge through God's word, which alone can lead to a good and a hopeful life. The Lord who himself studied, learned, and grew as a child will strengthen and support you in this loving work even as he forgives your weaknesses and covers your sins. We pray, teach me to walk in your ways, O Lord, and to guide young people in the paths of truth. In your name we pray. Amen. We continue in Second Kings, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 4th verse, entitled, Jehoash Repairs the Temple. Jehoash said to the priest, All the money of the holy things that is brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each man is assessed, the money from the assessments of persons, and the money that a man's heart prompts him to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priest take each from his donor, and let them repair the house, wherever any need of repairs is discovered. But by the twenty-third year of 
of King Jehoash, the priest had made no repairs on the house. Therefore King Jehoash summoned Jehoiada, the priest, and the other priests, and said to them, Why are you not repairing the house? Now therefore take no more money from your donors, but hand it over for the repair of the house. So the priests agreed that they should take no more money from the people, and that they should not repair and that they should not repair the house. Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side as one entered the house of the Lord. And the priest who guarded the threshold put in it all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. And whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest came up and they bagged and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they would give the money that was weighed out into the hands of the workmen who had the oversight of the house of the Lord. And they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of the Lord, and to the masons and the stonecutters, as well as to buy timber and quarried stone for making repairs on the house of the Lord. But there was not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, or any vessels of gold or of silver from the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. For that was given to the workmen who were repairing the house of the Lord with it. And they did not ask an accounting from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workmen, for they dealt honestly. The money from the guilt offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priest. At that time, Hazel, king of Syria, went up and fought against Gath and took it. But when Hazel set his face to go up against Jerusalem, Jehoash, king of Judah, took all the sacred gifts that Jehoshaphat and Joram and Ahazah his fathers, the kings of Judah, had dedicated, and his own sacred gifts, and all the gold that was found in the treasures of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and sent these to Hazel, king of Syria. Then Hazel went away from Jerusalem. So far the word of the Lord. The Lord's house receives much needed attention from Jehoash, Jehoada, and other faithful servants. Care for a sacred duty is an act of worship, just as surely as the singing of a hymn or the saying of a prayer. Today, regard the church offerings and your church property with due diligence. By the word of his house, the Lord will instruct you in faith, life, and the way of salvation. We pray, O Savior, I offer back to you what you have first so generously provided to me. Continually bless me by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the end of today's reading from 2 Kings, the end of chapter 12, the death of Joash. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king of Judah? His servants arose and made a conspiracy and struck down Joash in the house of Milo on the way that goes down to Thila. It was Jozekah, the son of Shemite, and Jehozabad, the son of Shomer, his servants, who struck him down so that he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. So far the word of the Lord. Joash, was, who began so well, comes to a sorrowful end because he departs from the Lord's way. Through faith, let the end of your life honor your Savior and your heritage. Jesus, who abides with you, will always, he will always be with you. He will day by day forgive your faults and deliver you from temptation. His instruction and presence are everlasting. We pray, O Lord, let your mercies be new. For me every morning to the end of my days, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We continue now in prayer with the Pray for Us calendar for this 27th day of August. We give thankful hearts to God for sending his Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and rise again so that we might have the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord of the church to hear his people and grant their prayers for, prayers for mercy. For God's holy church here and throughout the whole world, for all who confess the name of Christ and for the unity of the church in doctrine and practice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For humble faith, for joy in the mercy of God who has raised up the poor and undeserving and given us a place at his table, and for the work of the Spirit to bring us to repentance and keep us from thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for all who receive the body and blood of Christ and for the renewal of our lost lives, that we may, by daily contrition and repentance, be kept in a state of grace until Christ comes to bring all things to their perfect fulfillment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.